And the answer is, they're all going to be affected. Um, no enzyme in one means this product won't be made, which means this product won't be made, which means this product won't be made, this product won't be made. This product has a regulatory effect on this reaction. That's going to change the amounts of those two products, of the substrate and product for that reaction. In fact, of course, it's much more complicated than that because all of these molecules will be connected to other metabolic pathways. Um, and often there will be kinds of regulation where different molecules interact in other ways affecting the metabolic activity. So there will be massive um, effects of even a single change in a metabolic pathway. It's worse if we think about regulatory proteins. And that's because regulatory proteins don't just bind to a single gene, whereas catalytic reactions, um, generally the enzyme catalyzes one step. But regulatory genes typically, regulatory proteins typically bind to more than one place in the genome. And they bind to these different places in the genome with different strengths. So if the colors here indicate sort of variant sequences, we'll see that some of these sequences have the regulatory protein bound to them. This is just one regulatory protein, and some of them don't. Um, a way to think about this is to think about the diversity of sequences that a regulatory protein will bind to. So here's the sequence that we can think of as being the, the perfect binding sequence for the particular regulatory protein we're thinking about. But this protein will also bind to other sequences that don't quite match its ideal, but they're good enough. There's one, there's another, there's another. So these sequences are also all acceptable to differing degrees as binding sites. And once the effectiveness, the strength of different binding sites has been studied, it's often graphically summarized by a structure, a diagram like this, which is called a sequence logo. That's a sequence logo, which is a diagram showing how the regulatory protein responds to differences in sequence. Here we see that it cares a lot about the G, having a G, then it needs to have two A's. It's important to have a G here and two T's here. These other positions are helpful, and some positions it really doesn't care. The consequence is that these different genes that the protein regulates will be activated to different extents, perhaps very strongly here, and maybe hardly at all here. Now, the situation is even more complicated if we're thinking about two different versions of the DNA, for instance, in different individuals, where different each of these regulatory sequences may ex binding sites may itself exist in different alleles. So this would be one allele at this position. This would be a different allele of the DNA sequence that the regulatory protein binds to. And so if we have two different alleles of the regulatory protein, so the gene encoding the protein comes in different versions, and the DNA sequences that it binds to comes not just in different versions around the chromosome, but in different homologous versions at homologous sites in different homologous chromosomes, then we see there's many, many different ways that the proteins can affect gene expression. They depend on the interactions, the match between the alleles of the binding protein and the alleles of the sequences that they bind to. It's even more complicated if we think about heterozygotes because both alleles of the regulatory protein are present in the same cell and they may compete for binding with the different alleles of each individual binding site as well as between different binding sites. So there's a complicated network of possible effects depending on which alleles are present at each of these combinations. It's even more complicated, even even more complicated, 
because most of these genes are not just regulated by a single protein. Instead, they're typically controlled by two or three or more different regulatory proteins, each of which may be present in two or more different alleles. So the permutations are enormous. Now, what we've done, we've thought about how natural selection doesn't see distinct phenotypes. There's something that those are Boundaries between phenotypes are something that geneticists invented. Natural selection works on the reproduction of the organism as an integrated whole. We looked particularly at metabolic steps where we can see how interconnected the effects of the different steps are, even though we can draw each step as a distinct event. And then we looked at regulatory proteins, where it's much more complicated because the regulatory proteins are interactive by their very nature, and they interact with more than one different gene at different levels with different strengths. Coming up next, we'll look at yet another reason why the relationship is complicated, and that is that the effects of natural genetic variation depends on environmental factors as well. I hope to see you there.